Let's give Jesus a beautiful round of applause. Friends, it's in the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus that we are here. Is everything all right? We're going to have a very blessed service. We will open our heart for the Lord to operate, and we will see the hand of the Lord doing wonders. But let's pay, pay attention now to this right here. If we remain as mere spectators, nothing's going to happen. We must be involved in the word of the Lord. Jesus was preaching in a certain synagogue, and there was a man with a withered hand. But for Jesus to heal him, he had to be in the center, to where he was able to operate. He didn't want to heal him there. He was too far where he wouldn't be noticed. No, he didn't want to do that. He brought the man to the center and healed him. And that's what God wants to do. But he doesn't only want to heal, he wants to forgive your transgressions, which is the greatest work that you may receive from God. He wants to prosper your life. He wants to edify in such a manner that the hellish forces will never attack you. They might, they might try to attack you, but it will be to no avail. They will not succeed because he wants because he wants you to be in his presence where God himself is a wall of fire around you and nothing will overcome it. On the contrary, whatever rises against you shall crumble to the ground. Let's see an individual who received the blessing in one of our gatherings. Will you please roll the tape? What's God done? Due to repetitive strain injury, I could move my thumbs, you know? You couldn't move? I had to exchange hands to squeeze the pipette. Handle what? The pipette, because I work What is a, a pipette? It's a tube used to collect blood. Oh, you work you work at a cl clinical clinical analysis yes. lab. Yes. So you use the pipette to transfer liquids. Collect and transfer. So I had to squeeze the pipette with the other thumb because I could move this one. But now I can move both. Now of you them. can move them. It's a little swollen, but it will get better. Do, do they do they still hurt? No, they don't. Oh, you may go in the name of Jesus. Keep using your pipette. Glory to God, brethren. You see how the devil attacks? Even those who analyze our blood in the laboratory have no peace. The devil says, you won't analyze anything, your thumbs will be stiff. But after the prayer, she was healed for sure. Whether you work with a pipette or not, rest assured that Jesus is a healer. He is our savior and our deliverer, and he shall bless us all today. As usual, it'll be in the simplicity of the word of God. There's nothing complicated in the word of the Lord. On the contrary, when we believe, God gets into action and he blesses us. And certainly then today, he wants to do great things within our life. He shall do them. And why will he do them? Because God's work is to deliver all people and destroy the forces of evil until the day when all evil is over, his work will then be finished. Why will it end? Because all things come to an end. But until the end comes, um, we will keep seeing Jesus healing, delivering, and doing many wonders. One day someone told him, Lord, get out of here because Herod wants you to be arrested. He said, go tell that fox that today and tomorrow I perform cures and cast out demons. The third day I shall be perfected. The today was his ministry on earth in those days. The tomorrow that he mentioned is our present days and he works through us. And the third day is after the church is raptured. Then there won't be any works of God. But we who are awaiting the kingdom of God we won't be here on earth. We will ascend with him. But while we are in this world and the churches too, God will keep on operating, healing and delivering and doing his great wonders. I have two messages for you. In a while, we'll read one First Corinthians chapter 15 and later the other message will be in First Samuel, but it will be towards the end of the service. There's still plenty of things to take place. Now we're going to see another blessing. Royal the tape, please, will you? What was the problem in your back? I had a lot of pain in my back and in my knee. And what couldn't you do? I couldn't bend over. It was impossible. It was impossible. How long has I've it I've been happened? feeling this 10 years. 10 years? Yes. Are you healed now? Let's see now. What do you want to see now? Let's see if I can bend over now. Didn't you bend over after the prayer? Yes, I did here. If you did it there, you can do here. God is healed. Do what you couldn't do before. Thanks be to God. It's all, thanks, it's all gone. It's all gone. Let's applaud the Lord Jesus, brethren. People, they are very negative, brethren. It seems they wait for the bad things. When God heals, he heals. The same when God forgives. The same when he sets people free. The gifts of the Lord God are irrevocable. But sometimes the devil comes and you keep confessing negative things. Will the woes return? No. His gifts are irrevocable. When God gives a blessing, grab it. Amen, brethren. Dear friends, let's go now 
to, uh, to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. There's a good message here for us today. The verse, it is number 20 and 2, and we are going to study it in the name of Jesus. Dear friends, in the first letter to the Corinthians 15.22, the Apostle Paul says the following words, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. This isn't just some information for the day of judgment, you know, but actually for our everyday life. The devil has even caused us to, to be aggravated with Adam. I've even seen people cursing. Why did he do that? The devil, the devil came to the world. That's okay, is it true? He sinned and the devil came in. But these people are acting like Adam today. And oftentimes we do that because the second Adam, the Bible refers to as Jesus. He came to undo the work of the first Adam. God didn't make a stopgap called salvation. God made a brand new work. And no matter how sinful someone might be, however badly they're suffering in the hands of the enemy, the enemy, the enemy using them the way he sees fit, if they acknowledge that Jesus paid the price for their salvation and cry out to the Lord, they will be made alive in, in Christ. They will receive life again. And we who accept Jesus as our Savior, we must never allow the enemy to keep us within his claws. And why? We were in the kingdom of darkness. We were saved and were conveyed to the kingdom of Jesus. Now we are protected in the kingdom of God, but the Lord God himself, who is a consuming fire that surrounds us, it is a, like a wall built all around us. And in no circumstance will the enemy be able to surpass this wall. However, if we happen to cross the wall, a snake will catch us, the devil strikes again, but we must not cross it. Just like everyone dies in Adam, everyone is or will be made alive in Christ. End of story. Now we therefore have to believe. Forget what Adam did, right? It happened. We know the whole story. Rather, let's remember what Jesus did. Jesus died in our place. He paid the price defeated the devil, he also gave us his name with all the honor that his name has so that we can use it against all the forces of evil, against all temptations, and also to receive the blessings of God. Amen. Let's focus on today's study now. It's in the first book of Samuel, chapter number 12. This is what happened. The Lord God never wanted the children of Israel to have a king. He wanted to be the king of the children of Israel. And over the course of many years, he used people that were called judges in order to rule over the people of God. The Lord would raise up the judges because men weren't regenerated yet. They would always sin. Today, there's no excuse. When you accept Jesus, it's forever. Forget about sins and temptations. Hold fast to Jesus so you don't stumble, fall, and be caught by evil again. So the children of Israel did evil things. God would then raise up and judge. Who would straighten things up? After 10, 20, 30 years, then they'd fall again. So he'd raise up another. When he raised up Samson, the Philistines were dominating the Israelites for 40 years. So Samson started to be used by God, but he eventually failed. He was a carnal man. He lost his hair and lost his strength and didn't finish the work. Well, but then years went by and God raised up Samuel a young man who was a, who, who was a judge, he was a prophet, he was a priest, and he was, he was like a king. That's about the profile of a judge. But the children of Israel were jealous of the other nations and said, we want to die, we want to die. God didn't want it and raised one against his will. When you insist on God, it's the permissive will of God. You are not doing that well. You must want what's fair. Do what God tells you to do. When he called me to preach the gospel, I was going to Moscow to study medicine. I said to the Lord, God, let me go. I'll come back and I'll serve you. I want to be a doctor. And he would have allowed me to go if I kept insisting every day. I'd go there, but I wouldn't be doing God's true will, but the permissive one. But he was wise as he has always been then. Then I felt the need to tell the Lord why I wanted to be, why I wanted to be a doctor. It wasn't to be rich but to be able to heal the sick, take people to Christ. Then he spoke within my soul. I can't explain how it happened, but you know when it, you're here speaking God, God speaking with my power, you will hear more people than as a doctor 
and will lead them to heaven. Then I came to my senses. I said, God, the world has lost a doctor, but you've gotten a preacher. Here then, we, we see Samuel bidding goodbye because he spoke and the God gave them a king who was King Saul. And verse 22, he starts by saying, uh, bidding them farewell, stepping down from his ministry as a priest, as a, as, a, as a judge, and as a prophet. For the Lord will not forsake his people. Never, brethren. The people of God, if you've come too far and it seems there's no way out, don't believe the devil. Seek the Lord and he will bring you back. The Lord will forgive you. Don't make any decision that may lead you to everlasting destruction. No matter how far you've come, confess and ask the Lord. You'll go through a time of trials, but God will most definitely rise you and you won't owe anything to the devil at all. For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake. We have the name of the Lord upon us and he will never forsake us because it has pleased the Lord to make you his people. Friends, I've never been able to, to go up to God of myself. No one has. It's God who's turned us into his people. Now, when we were in transgression, completely destroyed, he brought us back to life. Would he forsake us now? No. In fact, if we've done something wrong, we have to go through the process of repentance, not to be lashed out, but to repent, to acknowledge and make amends with God. And if necessary, with those whom we might have wronged, you know. But God will never forsake us because it has pleased the Lord, his God. And the devil is doing everything for you to keep sinning because he doesn't want you to be a part of God's people. Sin does keep us away from the Lord. Notice Samuel's character. He said, moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and the right way. He didn't harbor a, a, any, any wicked feeling in his heart. Oh, I was doing so well here as a judge and serving God, and you ask him for a king. So forget about me. It's up to you. No, no, no. Far be it from me to sin against the Lord. If you, if you get upset at someone, and let's suppose rightly so, and you get angry and don't pray for that person, you're out of your mind. Dr. Swadish, should I pray to it? That person needs prayer and they need yours so that they may repent and make amends with God. If they are in your hands and you don't open up your hands, you will pay the price. Dr. Swadish, where is it written? Let's go to the Bible. Mark chapter 11, verse um, 11, 25. Mark 11, 25. Here, the Lord Jesus is speaking. He was quite clear so that no one will stumble in his life. He said these words. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you for your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. You see how serious this is? So when people do you wrong and you say, God, I don't forgive them, of course you can't trivialize forgiveness. They must come to their senses so, and confess the wrong they did. In Luke number 17, 3, it is written, If your brother sins against you, go and rebuke him. So if you know that he sinned, go up to him and rebuke him. If he repents, forgive him. If he doesn't, then you don't. But you offer it to God, Lord, as for me, I'm forgiving. In order for it to be complete, of course, he must come to you and make amends with you. But you already said, God, send him to me and I'll forgive that person. And then he will go his way. Samuel talked about it. Let's go back to Samuel and focus on what, what the prophet said. He said, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord. Far be it. Don't get involved in errors in ceasing to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and the right way. Oh, oh, glory to God. There comes his message. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all of your heart. For consider what great things he has done for you. It means he would pray for them, but they only had to fear the Lord and nothing more. To respect the Lord? To respect the Lord. What does to respect mean? To obey what he says. 
If I am walking there with someone and then one day I do something wrong to this person, what does Jesus say? Make amends with them right away. Ask God to give you wisdom and do it. You must, you must do it because if they file suit against you, they will take you to a judge next to a judicial officer and you'll go to jail. You will be convicted in other words. You may be walking with that person, but if you're in the wrong, you must actually make amends. That's, that's what the Bible says. Let's go back to Samuel. Only fear the Lord, respect the Lord, respect his word, the guidance that he gives, and serve him in truth with all your heart. Brethren, do not serve the Lord dishonestly, thinking that God, that he's not aware of some of or all things, <laughs> he knows it all. Before your thought is formed in your head, God knows what you will think. He knows everything about all of us. Before a disease appears in your body, he knows it will appear. God, he is complete in all things. So serve the Lord wholeheartedly. Don't try to deceive the Lord and never use the name of the Lord God to cause someone to be deceived. Oh, I'm speaking in the name of Christ. Uh, but your actions are different from what your words. Don't trifle with sacred things. So you must speak and live in Christ's name for people to believe you and they will see you truly serve him with all of your heart in truth with all with all of your heart for consider what great things he has done for you you have witnessed how the lord works the lord is in your midst he can do something the other way around if you lie to him like adnaeus and sapphira had, had lied let's read the last verse now but if you still do wickedly you shall be swept away watch out if you're of God, if you're seeking God, you are feeling the Lord's presence, you're enjoying it. But if you keep doing wicked things, doing the wrong things you used to do, you or deceiving, you shall be swept away. Both you and your king. There's no excuse. God doesn't have protégés. Oh, but that one is the pastor of the church or a worker. No, 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 no. No matter who. We have to serve God with all of our heart, with our heart open, seeking the Lord, doing that which pleases Him. And then what will happen? The Lord God will bless us. Amen, brethren. I'm going to pray for all of those who have been feeling pain, who's ailing now. There's always someone who needs it. Some people have come to seek their blessings, so now their time has come. Do you want me to pray for you? Do you need it? Stand up now and I'll pray for you. Tens of seconds. Don't take longer than that. Because if you do, you don't have faith and won't receive anything. Bow your head and close your eyes now. The Lord wants to bless you. God, I enter your presence now to ask you for a blessing for his congregation and to a congregation, Lord, that is far bigger than this, that's spread over the country, Lord. Some people, God, are praying for the first time and many don't even know how how to pray god stretch out your hand now i'd like you to come down to this church in person to perform miracles and cures and to deliver these people from suffering and i'd like you to go O oh lord wherever they are in any part of the world god i'd like you to stretch out your hand and heal Heal, my Lord. I shall use the authority you have given me for your glory. In the name of Jesus, I paralyze all the works of the enemy within your life, and I say, devil, it is over. Time has come for you to beat a retreat. I'm not just asking, I'm giving an order. Take your arthritis, your arthrosis, your rheumatism, rheumatoid arthritis, your pain, your tendinitis, bursitis, nephritis, and any other disease, whether it is in their back vertebrae, discus, or if it's in their head, migraine, or whatever. Go away, because I'm commanding you. You who paralyze someone's kidneys, I command you, let go of them in the name of Jesus. Leave the ovaries, the tubes, the uterus. Leave the prostate now. Leave their kidneys, leave their bladder. Leave any part of their body, their legs, their arms, their hands, their fingers, their joints. Leave. Leave right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And amen. Look at me now. Don't sit down. 
Do now what you couldn't do before. Dr. Schwartz, I'm healed. I couldn't move my arm. I couldn't move my hand. I couldn't raise up my arms. I couldn't bend my legs or move. Dr. Schwartz, God has just healed me. My my illness is gone. Is your illness gone? Raise your hand like this. Oh, there are many people. Tell me about it real quick. Well, God keeps healing people, more people. What happened, my friend? I felt pain in my arms, in the joints of my knees, my feet, my ankles, all the bones of my body. How long have you had this pain? Around seven years. Seven yes. years? Is the pain it's gone, gone now? now? In the name of oh, Jesus glory Christ. Oh, to God. In oh, the name well, of beautiful. Jesus. Now you, sister, what happened? When I closed my eyes, it seemed like I was going to fall. Dizziness. Uh -huh. It's gone. Is it gone now? Thank God. And you? Since this morning, I woke up with a headache on the right side, uh -huh. and today it was getting worse. Uh -huh. But after the prayer, it's gone. Oh, dear God, you are so awesome. And you, my sister. I was feeling pain in my legs. My knees were aching, so uh -huh. it was difficult for me to walk. Uh -huh. I've had this problem for five years in my legs. It was really serious, and you now. know, but I said, I'll go to church today and be healed in the name of Jesus. And thank God I don't feel any more pain in my legs and knees. Are all the yes, ailments gone now? Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. When I came here, I knew I would be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Let's applaud Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Brethren, if you have been healed, raise your hand now and say, thank you, Lord. Take your seats in the name of Christ. And let's move on now in the name of the Lord. And speaking of the beautiful things that the Lord does, let's now watch the real life drama. One day I climbed the wall of my yard to take a look at the roof and see what happened. And as I was coming down, I jumped and the impact I felt strained my, strained my back and it got locked up. After some time, I think two or three months, it was a Sunday morning, we woke up, his back was still completely locked up. And after I asked him to just take a trash bag to the front yard, the minute he bent over, he couldn't stand straight again. I stayed put for a while, hoping to stand up, but I didn't. I called my wife, and then I started to feel a lot of pain, such a strong pain. I started to scream, and I was fainting in her arms, and I passed out, and she, and she said I was very pale. I kept asking him what was going on. He was trembling, but he managed to say it was his back. I left him there exactly as he was, and I went to the drugstore and asked the pharmacist to give him an injection to, to alleviate his pain. I had an instant relaxation of the muscles. The pain had locked up my breathing, you know, but the problem was still in my back. I couldn't even bend down to tie my shoe, you know. I had to sit down, put my shoe on, making such a, an effort to put them on, you know. He complained when he stood up, when he walked, he couldn't sleep well. He would lie down on the couch to let me sleep comfortably. And the pain was so strong, but when he sat on the couch, it would listen a little. I was baptized when I was 12 years old, but my wife wasn't. We started to watch Dr. Suarez on television, and we decided to attend the Grace of God Church, you know? We attended on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays, and we were there every week. We were baptized in the Grace of God Church, and through the program, we saw that he was going to come to our city, and my wife said, let's go, let's go see Dr. Suarez. With confidence, Jackson and his wife took part in the meeting held in the city of Curitiba on May 15, 2015. Dr. Suarez prayed and we received his prayer with a lot of faith. Go away now and leave their back. Leave and take your pain, herniation, take your bone spur or any other evil. Go, go away in the name of Jesus. When he finished praying, he said, now do what you couldn't do before. He said, don't hesitate, do it right now, now. So then I bent down and I managed to reach where I couldn't reach before, you know. And I started to smile. <laughs> I laughed because, you know, it's supernatural. It's totally different. I never had gone through an experience like that. It was the Lord working, Jackson. After he was healed, he witnessed his victory. What's your name? Jackson. Jackson, what has God done for you? My back, uh, it locked up a month ago, a little over a month ago, actually. And it locked up completely. I couldn't move. I couldn't bend over. And now, can you bend over? Yes, I can. Can There you? were things I couldn't do before, but now I can. So do it again now so that everyone can see. 
Doesn't it hurt anymore? Nope. You may go now in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Things he couldn't do before, he can do them easily now. He moves his body without pain. He doesn't lie on the couch to, <laughs> to sleep, <laughs> to straighten his back. So thank God he is much better. I can sleep, take a bath, put on my shoes, put on my socks, put on my pants easily. He was healed. He's fine. <laughs> He's just great. We can say it's no longer a problem. Almost a month after I started going to the Grace of God Church, I received my healing. I know the God whom I serve, and you don't receive the blessings from God unless you don't want to. Oh, Jesus, you're awesome. I don't know how you react to this, but I get very emotional, brethren, to see what God does and I've been in this road, on this road for more than 40 years, seeing the same things every day. But for me, it's a confirmation that God has not forsaken us and that he keeps doing the same things. You know, believe it, God is doing something in your life and it's really important. His life is happy, he is happy, I am happy, and I believe you are happy as well. Do it now. No matter what problem you have, seek the Lord. They sought him on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, Sundays, they hungered for God. When I went there one day, they attended the entire service. I was in God's presence. He was using me in a few seconds when we pray. The minute we pray, believe it. God, in the very least, start to restore you. Brethren, today is the day of God's blessings. The word has come with it into your heart as a message from God, and God is going to fulfill his word now. Bow your head and close your eyes. God, we are praying now about that which prophet Samuel said. Oh God, that judge, oh God, that holy priest, and it well pleased you to make us all your people. God, what an assurance. Paul spoke of what the first Adam did, but he spoke even more about what the second did, who undid the work of the first one. Therefore, we go up to you now in order to bless all these people that are praying now, and I bless them all. In the name of Jesus, and I send all evil away in the name of Jesus.